Silverstone is known for an army of things. One of which is building completely over-the-top office PC cases that look like the cousin of a Dell Optiplex. Not necessarily beautiful on the outside, but it's the inside that counts. And you know what? Silverstone also made a accompanying air cooler. This is the Hydrogon H90A RGB, Silverstone's ultra small form factor, low profile, more words describing the word small, CPU air cooler. This little piece of cooling equipment comes in the usual cooler packaging containing the usual amount of imagery and some specs, a massively downsized version, but uh, still. Inside we'll find the usual suspects, mounting hardware for all the relevant platforms and some thermal paste. The cooler itself looks quite simple, but keeping the same color palette at Silverstone's much bigger Hydrogon dual tower cooler. An all aluminum 26mm high 18 FPI heatsink with a copper nickel plated base at the bottom. Going up from there we got four heat pipes that travel left and right into the heatsink and interesting here is that the heatsink is not a total rectangle. Due to how it's mounted only part of the heatsink can reach the full 26 mm. The outer parts are only 20 mm high. The fan on top of the cooler is one of Silverstone's in-house made 92 mm fans at 15 mm thickness. Over a PVM connection and a hydraulic bearing, it can spin up to 2600 RPM while it's pushing 45.73 CFM at up to 2.29 mm of H2O. It is also here where the main design aspect of the cooler comes into play, RGB. Using the 3-pin RGB connector, which is also expandable using the splitter next to it, we can control the lights of the fan in whatever way we want. Overall, the lights seem to be strong enough to not make them easily countable, so it's really good enough for me. In total, the cooler measures 95mm width and length, and 47 mm in height. So this really falls into the ultra small form factor category like the Nokia L9 or Be Quiet's Pure Rock LP. Those types of coolers that are meant to be squeezed into the smallest of the smallest cases out there. To get the cooler going on Intel, we need to take the backplate according to our system. After positioning it behind the motherboard, we need to take the angled spacers for LGA1700 or round ones for all the other sockets, followed by the brackets in an inwards pointing position and screw everything down using the Intel screws. Over on AMD, we need to remove the pre-installed retention brackets and replace them with some AMD space followed by the brackets and screw them down using the AMD screws. From there on both platforms, splash some thermal place onto the chip, position the cooler on top and screw it down right through the heatsink. And funnily enough, we don't even need to remove the fan. The 11 wings are spaced out far enough so that the average screwdriver can go right through, which is kind of nice. And something else which is quite nice is how Silverstone packaged all of the spacers for AMD and for Intel. They are like breakouts. This is kind of cool. I love that. And now let's get to the benchmarks. This being a ultra small form factor cooler, it is natural that solely the 120 watts workload applies. And at that workload, the Hydrogon H90 managed to keep the CPU at 61.8 degrees C above ambient. Comparing it solely to other coolers in this size category doesn't look bad for the Hydrogon. At 1.5 degrees C less than the Pure Rock LP, it is quite the good burst performance. And although it landed quite far behind the Scythe Shuriken or L9X65 from House Noctua, please keep in mind that these two are substantially bigger. So let's be fair. Over on the noise to performance graph, we can see that this good burst performance does come at the cost of some noise, some loud noise. From start to finish, the Hydrogon H90 ended up being either quite a lot louder or a bit behind in temperature compared to the Pure Rock LP, depending on one, what metric you want to normalize to. Unfortunate, but that's just how it is. So where do we stand? The low profile CPU cooler market is really freaking hard. Not only is it hard to create such a small cooler, but for it then to not run like a piece of crap is a whole other scale. For the Hydrogon, even if it is on the slightly louder end, it did manage to pull off 120 watts indefinitely. So it's not bad. Being able to handle that load with that size is already an achievement. 
For low to lower mid-tier CPUs or for tiny builds, the Hydrogon H90 will do just fine. 13500, 13600 non-K, AMD 7600 non-X. For these types of use cases, it will be fine. And only considering the sub 50mm high coolers that we had, it's actually the best performer I'm aware of as, as of now. Though keep in mind that we have two. Noise-wise, Nah, it's a different thing. Could be a bit better. It is acceptable, but it, it could be better. The Dark Rock LP is just straight up better. Design-wise, it's simple, all aluminum, with a black and kind of see-through milky acrylic fan, boasting some of that FPS-enhancing unicorn power. If that's for you, great. If all black is more your thing, well, then you shouldn't be looking at reviews about coolers that have ARGB in the name. And at below 50 euros right now and here, it's okay, it's not like affordable considering the average single tower, but it is still okay as most SFF type of stuff costs a lot of money just to be small. So to get or not to get, directly compared to the Pure Rock LP, it's a question between max performance or noise 2 performance. It's, it's really your choice here. But from a quality standpoint, there is very little to nag here, given it's a very small thing and very small things also tend to be quite robust and quite sturdy, but Silverstone did manage to score some points here. But okay, for today, this is going to be it for Silverstone and their Hydrogon H90 ARGB. At this point, a huge thank you to them for sending it over. And on a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG Poopy mod, you'd say, pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to find out why Silverstone went with the name Hydrogon. It's an air cooler. There, there has to be some reasoning behind this. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the Silverstone Milo 12 Ultra Office style case. There's a reason we were covering it. And I hope you can see that one too. Hope to see you on the next one. Bye-bye.